Folks, welcome back. This is Armin Pantalone, the Chief Technology Officer for Gigatronics, and we're going to be having another installment of our Thames talks. Threat emulation system being the Thames, and uh, some very specific features of this particular product article. The real adaptive real time closed loop emulator. There's both an adaptive radar emulator and a cognitive electronic warfare system emulator. And we're going to be showing you a very specific feature set that both of those entities. Uh, who are foes in the electromagnetic spectrum dominance battle uh, can leverage. And we'll show you some of that feature set today. So what we're going to show you today, the specific feature is uh, pulse descriptor word extraction from received pulse parameters or RPP PDW extraction. And uh, what we use to generate that is an RFSOC, an RF system on a chip card in uh, one of our computers and it's going to be taking in RF and it's going to be sensing it. It's going to be doing digital signal processing and it's going to be spitting out in real time all of the received pulse parameters that it sees and it's going to be putting them into what are typically known as pulse descriptor words. So pulse width, PRI, center frequency, etc. And we'll show you how some of that works today. So now that you've seen what the eight channel RF system on a chip card looks like, including its eight channels of digital analog conversion and it's eight channels of analog to digital conversion. We're gonna show you that we're gonna be using one of the DAC outputs, DAC channel four, to feed a, a waveform into A to D channel one. And we're gonna be using that FPGA and all the ARM processors on board to analyze the pulses and give you the pulse parameters in real time. And we do that through, through a, uh, a GUI that allows us to show the results of all the pulses processed in near real time with three displays. Time domain display, which is just voltage or amplitude versus time, a frequency display, which is frequency versus amplitude, and then a rolling histogram or a spectrogram of uh, frequency versus amplitude and color, and also a time history of that. Uh, so we're going to start really simple. We're just going to do a very simple pulse train of just one pulse per second and uh, a set pulse width and PRI and center frequency. So the top of the GUI right here just allows us to create the RF out of DAC channel 4 with all of its pulse parameters. And then we're going to analyze that with the rest of the GUI. So for right now, we're putting out one pulse of 10 microsecond pulse width and a 100 microsecond PRI, and it has a dwell of one second or 1,000 milliseconds. And if you look at the screen, what you'll see is the event processor, which sees anytime it sees energy, it's going to create a brand new waveform file, and analyze that and spit out the data. So what you're seeing right now is every one second it sees a pulse. It's got the correct um, PRI and it's got the correct pulse width and the center frequency of 100 megahertz. You can also see the PDW's logged is about one per second, just like it should be. So this is just the introduction and starting slow. Okay. Okay, so for right now, let's just focus on the frequency analysis, and we're going to leave the pulse width, the PRI, and the rep rate all the same, but we're going to change the center frequency, and you should see on the spectrum display, this peak, which is on max hold right now, we can clear that. It's telling us this pulse right now is coming in at 100 megahertz. We're going to change that in 100 megahertz increments. on the pulse generator, and we should see that reflected in the frequency display. We're gonna go up to 800, and we're gonna go up to 1200. Oops. And we're gonna push the limits of the eight, uh, D to A, sorry, the A to D. So let's go back to 1200, and then 50 this time. Oops. All right, so 
if you look at the center frequency of the first event trigger one every second it's got the correct center frequency at 1250 megahertz and the correct rip rate so now what we're going to do let's clear this frequency display we're going to go back to say 400 megahertz you should see the histogram come to 400 megahertz and we're going to increase the number of pulses by changing the rep rate as you can see the uh, PDW's logged has increased by a factor of 10 10 per second and you'll see that reflected in the event log trigger as well and we can go down even again and you can see it a much higher rep rate and we're going to change the frequency one more time to 600 you can uh, show you the time scale and the next thing we're going to do too is increase the number of pulses to 10 sorry let's make it five and change the waterfall speed okay we'll show you a few more features in just another second okay so what we're going to do now is give it a little bit more challenging signal than just the fixed pulse width pri and center frequency that we had from the deck uh, on the RF soc card itself so we're going to this other machine a much more complicated rf playback and generation system for signal generation you might have seen this in some of our other temp stocks videos so what we're going to do now is we're going to play a 250 megahertz chirp with a uh, fixed pulse width of 25 microseconds and a PRI of 100 microseconds. But what we're going to do is we're also going to change the center frequency of that chirp from 300 megahertz up to 600 megahertz. And I'll show you how that looks on, on this scope before we put it into the RFSOC card and uh, do the real-time pulse parameter extraction. So without further ado, let me start with a center frequency of 300 megahertz. That's what it's going to look like. You can see the 25 microsecond PRI, sorry, the 25 microsecond pulse width and 100 microsecond PRI and the 250 megahertz linear frequency modulation excursion or FM chirp. So let me stop that and I'm just going to show you how we can change the frequency to 500, center frequency of 500 megahertz and just start again. And we're going to stop that again and go all the way up to, let's say, uh, 600. And we're going to put those three different center frequencies through the uh, through the received pulse parameter attraction. Okay. So we, uh, okay. So we're just going to cycle through same pulse width, same PRI, three different center frequencies. We've already piped it over to the uh, RFSOC card for the RPP PDW extraction, and we'll show you on the real time display of the PDW extraction with all the event processors and the uh, displays in both time and frequency domain. So without further ado, let me start the first one and it's gonna be centered. The first one is at 300 megahertz. In our spectral display, you'll see the 300 megahertz center frequency with the 250 megahertz LFM or frequency excursion for the chirp. And then also the correct pulse width and the PRI. And let me uh, stop that and go to uh, 500 megahertz center frequency. Move that guy over to 500 megahertz. You'll see the uh, correct 250 megahertz excursion around 500 megahertz. And we'll do that again for, let's say, uh, 700 megahertz. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the uh, RFPG, the RF Playback and Generation System, and we'll put in that complicated pulse, a more complicated pulse, 
uh, fixed pulse width PRI, 25 microsecond pulse width, 100 microsecond PRI, but it has a 250 megahertz linear FM or chirp on it. We're gonna incrementally change the center frequency from 300 megahertz to 500 megahertz and then to 800 megahertz uh, with it piped into the RPP PDW attraction. We'll show you that in real time. So to get started, uh, I'll start the first one off and then we're gonna have my, uh, my able-bodied lab assistant, Igor, take over and start off the pulse train. So just to start uh, the display, we're gonna start the peak, we're gonna clear it, and we're gonna enable the uh, output or the input to the RPP PDW extraction. So there you go, you have a uh, center to 300 megahertz, you have a 250 megahertz excursion with the correct pulse width and PRI. We're gonna stop that one right now. We're gonna increase the frequency, center frequency to 500 meg. There's a center frequency of 500 meg. Again, with the correct pulse width PRI and start and stop frequency. And we're gonna stop that. Now I'm gonna push it up to 800 megahertz center frequency. And if you look at the uh, the rate at which the PDWs are being logged and generated, and just to show you too, the uh, I'm going to remove the signal, and you should see the amplitude, which is uh, green in the mid color scale, should incrementally come down as I slowly disconnect the cable and drop the amplitude of the signal down. And we're gone. I can't really fine tune it that much. But that's what it would look like. Okay, and we're off. Okay, so uh, in conclusion, you know, now that we've shown you all these pretty colors and all these uh, displays in real time, and the fact that we're writing uh, receive pulse parameter, pulse descriptor words out in real time is really important. But what's the real utility of that? Well, whether you want to use our open hardware, uh, sorry, open architecture hardware and open architecture software and firmware as a basis for your test systems or have it just delivered for you. The important thing is whether you want to put a real-time closed-loop adaptive radar emulator in the loop or a real-time closed-loop electronic warfare system in the loop, we have the fundamentals for doing that. Uh, none of those systems can do anything without the inline digital signal processing done in real time and the ability to figure out what it's being illuminated, whether it's radar returns for a radar, or whether it's jammer input, like multiple range false targets, or whether it's to an EW system, uh, say like a radar warning receiver, whether it's being uh, searched, tracked, actively engaged, or possibly even in the terminal mode of an engagement with a high PRF waveform. So the ability to do this in real time on the hardware we've shown you, to build a test system around that, to have a real time closed loop entity inside your hardware and loop testing is really important. And that's what we're providing today, the open architecture hardware and software to allow that to happen. So thanks again for coming and watching our, uh, our product demonstration. And uh, as always, both a word of caution and warning, we are what you call professionals, so please don't try this at home. <laughs>